Hi, Peter Charles here, Focus for Life, fly fishing. And if you watched my previous video on the Claret Guinea Spade, you would have seen some issues I had with this method of winding on hurl using tinsel to guard the hurl to prevent it from breaking and falling apart. I use a dubbing loop method, so I, I tried the other one, it was recommended, and I, I sort of did the fly traditionally, didn't care for it that much. So I'm going to do the Inland Spade, which it has a similar body uh, and a similar tail. And uh, we'll use uh, some of the approaches I prefer, and we'll be able to see what the differences are when the fly is done. So let's get started with the Inland Spade and see the materials we're going to use. The hook uh, that's recommended for this fly is a, a light wire hook. So this is a Daiichi uh, 2051 Alec Jackson Spay. You could use any light wire hook that has a nice bend. The Tiemco 200R, 300R would be a good choice. Um, so uh, just keep in mind light wire. Oh, I think probably low water salmon would be good too. Our thread is a, a red Vivas Tenot. Our tail is deer hair. The body is black uh, ostrich hurl, and the hackle is soft grizzly. Now, in the previous one, the Claret Guinea Spade, I used grizzly cock. This is grizzly hen. So let's get tying. Now I'm going to stop right there. Normally, in traditional tying, you run a, a body of thread over the shank of the hook to give a tying in platform. I'm not doing that this time. I'm going to use my speed methods. So we're going to take a clump of deer hair, get rid of the short bits and all that under fur, reduce the size of it if it's too big. You really want to get rid of the short hairs because they bulk it up without adding anything. So take a moment to make sure you don't have any short ones in here. Now I could stack it at this point, I'm not going to bother, but I've uh, oh, still got a few short ones. That's better. So I'm going to size it. The, the tail comes to the uh, back of the gape of the hook, so I'm going to cut it off at that point. And now I'm going to tie it in, and I'm going to tie it in starting at the return. Pinch loop, pull down, wind forward. You can see how there still were some short ones in there. You can see what, how they spike up. Let's see if I can trap those down. Now we're going to tie in our first two strands of peacock, peacock curl by the butt. Make them about as the tag ends as long as they return. And I'm just going to get those locked in. Probably not a bad idea to do a quick wind up to lock those in place. Get everything smoothed out. Come back. Put a soft wrap back there to hold the tail. Now we're going to make a dubbing loop. And you can see I've got a gap there. I'm in my thread. Now I'm going to wrap over that gap in that fashion. And the purpose for that is it keeps that uh, second strand from coming loose and unraveling. Now I move my thread out of the way. I'll turn my vise so everything comes off at the same angle. Pull my hair down, the hurl I should say, and get the hackle pliers going. Okay, I'll just let that hang. Now I just gently spin that. If you get a little raw bust when you're spinning, you can actually break the hurl, so let's not get too gung-ho over it. Now what I'm going to do here is make a gentle wrap right at the back to hold Bring that tail down. Now I'll start coming forward. Now 
I'll stop right at the return. Maybe one more wrap. Or two. There we go. Lock that in place. Now I'm going to tie in my ostrich hurl, the second pair of barbs, and these I'll trim off. I'll make another dubbing loop, same thing, trap it upside down. Grab it with hook hackle pliers. Now gently spin it. Work your twists up. All the way up. Okay. Now we're going to go back and then come forward. And with this wrap, we'll go up on the return. There we go. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that body looks a lot better than I had on the uh, Claret Guinea Spade. And I think just using a dubbing loop produces a much smoother body. You're a little bit more in control of it, and um, it's easy to get a second one started. As you can see, I can, get a, I can get a third one started. I could make that body even fluffier if I wanted to uh, put a, th a third one, a set of two in, or even a fourth set of two. Just keep doing it and producing the body. Just I, I would just keep each sub subsequent body a little bit longer than the previous one, so you've got to leave yourself some tying in room, but you could keep adding it as, as much as you wanted to make the body as thick as you want. Okay, now for our hen grizzly. And as per usual, always make sure you're winding in front of the previous turn. Stroke the barbs back. Now, fold that quill over and snap it off. I got a few bits sticking up there. See if I can trap those down with the thread. Soft wraps at the back. Bring it forward. Ah, I still got a few bits in there showing. Let's see if I can cover those up. Okay, whip finish. Now for some head cement. Okay, there's our inland spade. I think the body on this one looks an awful lot better than the other version. Um, you could make the, the body a little more compact if you want, or you could spread it out. Your choice, how you want to do the proportions. Um, and, you know, you could have scrunched the body up a little bit more, but, you know, it's still, um, you know, quite fishable fly the way it is. And I think with that soft uh, gi um, grizzly, it should flow quite nicely and move quite nicely in the water. So give it a try, the Inland Spade, and that's my sort of quicker tying method using dubbing loops for protecting hurl rather than using uh, tinsel. So give it a try. Cheers.